Hey everybody, it's Let Your Light Shine. Steve-O. Yeah, I'm here. And we've only just begun. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he's laughing at me because I was stupid. Okay, <laughs> where are we? We're at the Karen Carpenter uh, apartment building. Well, the Karen Carpenter, well, the Car Carpenter's apartment buildings. Yes. Because her brother owned it too. Oh. It says here that the 1970s hit music duo Karen and Richard Carpenter bought a pair of apartment buildings and named them after their chart-topping singles. Close to you and only just begun. So we're going to do a little vlog about it. So Karen Carpenter was an American singer and drummer. Her and her brother Richard Carpenter formed the 1970s duo The Carpenters. Her skills as a drummer earned admiration from drumming luminaries and peers, but she is best known for her vocal performances. She typically sang in a contralto vocal range. Carpenter suffered from anorexia nervosa, an eating disorder that was little known at the time. She died at the age of 32 from heart failure caused by complications related to her mental illness. Carpenter's death led to increased visibility and awareness of eating disorders. So in 65 to 68, Karen and her brother Richard and his college friend Wes Jacobs, a bassist and tuba player, formed the Richard Carpenter Trio. The band played jazz at numerous nightclubs and also appeared on the TV talent show, Your All-American College Show. Karen, Richard, and other musicians, including Gary Sims and John Batis, also performed as an ensemble known as Spectrum. And Spectrum focused on a harmonious and vocal sound, recorded many demo tapes in the garage studio of friend and bassist Joe Osborne. Many of those tapes were rejected by record companies. According to former Carpenters member John Batis, those rejections took their toll. The tapes of the original sessions were lost in a fire at Joe Osborne's house, and their surviving versions of those early songs exist only as fragile reference discs. Finally, A&M Records signed the Carpenters to a recording contract in 69. Karen sang most of the songs on the band's first album, Offering and her brother wrote 10 out of the album's 13 songs. The issued single, which was covered, which was a cover of the Beatles song, became their first single and it reached number 54 on the Billboard Hot 100. Their next album, 1970's Close to You, featured two massive hit singles Close to You and We've Only Just Begun. They peaked at number one and two, respectively, on the Hot 100. Now, recorded in April 1982, was the last song Karen Carpenter recorded. She recorded it during a two-week intermission in her anorexia therapy with psychotherapist Stephen Levenkron in New York City. Despite the therapy, she continued to lose weight. Her anorexia had driven her to abuse thyroid me replacement medication to speed up her metabolism and laxatives. Despite Levenkron's treatment, her condition continued to deteriorate and she only lost more weight. Karen told her psychotherapist that she felt dizzy and that her heart was beating irregularly. Finally, in September of 82, she was admitted to Lenox Hill Hospital in New York where she was placed on parenteral nutrition, feeding by means of an intravenous drip. Wow. This procedure was a success insofar as it allowed her to gain much weight, 30 pounds, in a relatively short time. But regrettably, the sudden weight gain put a strain on her heart, which was already weak from years of improper diet. Carpenter returned to California in November of 82, determined to reinvigorate her career, finalize her divorce, and begin a new album with Richard. But on December 17, 1982, Karen gave her last singing performance in a multi-purpose room of the Buckley School in Sherman Oaks, California, singing Christmas carols for her godchildren, their classmates who attended the school, and other friends. On January 11th of 83, Karen made her last public appearance at a photo call of past Grammy Award winners to celebrate the award's 
25th anniversary. She appeared somewhat frail and worn out, but according to Dionne Warwick, she was vibrant and outgoing. Hey guys, so now we're here at Karen Carpenter's, the house that she died in. It's her parents' house, and uh, we found it, and so here we are. We thought we would end the vlog at the house that uh, she was at. On February 4th, 1983, less than a month before her 33rd birthday, Carpenter intended to sign papers making her divorce from Tom Burris official. Shortly after waking up, Carpenter collapsed in her bedroom at her parents' home. From what I read, it was the bedroom right above the garage. The paramedics called to the scene by Karen's mother found her heart beating once every 10 seconds. She was taken to nearby Downey Community Hospital for treatment where, by then in full cardiac arrest, she was pronounced dead 20 minutes later at 9.51 a.m. The acting Los Angeles County Coroner, Dr. Ronald Kornblum, performed the autopsy of Karen Carpenter. The results of the autopsy and cause of death were released to the public on March 11, 1983. A drug or medication overdose was explicitly ruled out. Said the cause of Karen Carpenter's death was stated as emetine cardiotoxicity due to or as a consequence of anorexia nervosa. What was not specified in the report was how the emetine got into Carpenter's system. In March 11, 1983, press release for the autopsy did not use the word epicac, and the link between the use of epicac syrup in Carpenter's death was not made at the time. But media reports describing the primary cause of Carpenter's death frequently used the phrase heartbeat irregularities brought on by chemical imbalances associated with anorexia nervosa, phrasing used by Dr. Ronald Kornblum during the press conference. He explained in 1985, it never occurred to me to mention epicac. In my mind, emetine and epicac are the same thing. Two years after Carpenter's death, March 21st, 1985, Kornblum was part of a teleconference with other medical doctors. At that time, Kornblum explicitly stated that Carpenter's heart failure was caused by repeated use of epicac syrup over an over-the-counter emetic often used to induce vomiting in cases of overdosing or poisoning. It said over the over time, this stuff will attack the heart muscle, ultimately causing disorders in the small electric impulses that coordinate the heart's beating. Those disorders lead to heartbeat irregularities, which in turn lead to death. 1985, they, uh, they made an ur a call urging to make Epicac syrup available only by prescription, or at least the addition of warning labels to the product. The conclusion that Carpenter's death was caused by chronic use of Epicac syrup was disputed by her mother and brother, who both stated that they never found empty vials of Epicac in her apartment and have denied that there was any evidence that she had been vomiting. Richard was also expressed that the belief that Karen was not willing to ingest Epicac syrup because of the potential damage that both the syrup and excessive vomiting would do to her vocal cords, and that she relied on laxatives alone to maintain her low body weight. Dr. Richard Shepard, a forensic pathologist, believed that Karen's abuse of Epicac syrup and Synthroid contributed to her death along with the singer's anorexia and shrunken heart. I didn't know there was any kind of controversial uh, anything about her death, except that she was anorexic. Either way, it's very sad because she was such a beautiful singer. And I also read that drumming was her main thing. Singing was like a second thing, and she was always behind the drums. And since she was five foot four, they said, you know, you need to get behind, out of those, behind those drums, and come sing to the front. Come to the front and sing. And they had someone else play the drums. In fact, I have it right here. Who was the drummer instead? When they put her uh, to the front, they said a former Disney Musketeer, Cubby O'Brien, served as the band's other drummer for many years. Very multi-talented. Actually, the Carpenter's Christmas album is my favorite of all the albums I listen to. That's always one of my favorite ones to listen to during Christmas time. It's pretty crazy they got a TV antenna. Oh. That's a relic. Wow. <laughs> and actually, there's another one right over there in that house. Okay. Oh, yeah, there but, is. But it's never, you never see them anymore.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this vlog and uh, I actually learned a thing or two about Karen Carpenter myself. So uh, don't forget to like and share and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And thanks for watching. See ya.